one uh, important value is that you have to always look at yourself as a trustee. And so you have to remove yourself from what the decision is. You have to see that the decision that you take, whatever it is, is in the best interest of all the stakeholders. I think that is important. The second thing is, is very important, I believe, that you should take a decision. Just take the, what is the right decision and forget about the result. If you act correctly or you act in the proper manner, then the result has to follow. If you are keeping worrying about, you know, what will happen, what is going to be the result, then your action is not, is not in the right manner. So, I think, and finally, I think uh, you have to leave it, uh, you take a decision and then you have to leave it with, you have to be equanimous in it. Not all decisions go right, some will go right, some will go wrong, and you have to accept that some will go wrong and take it in the flow. So I do believe that the more you give, uh, so I always tell everybody that when you're giving, actually you're being very selfish. Because when you give, you are actually it gives you a joy which is very difficult to get otherwise. It gives you, in my view, true joy. That's one thing. Second, if you believe in that good karma is going to get you benefits in your selfish interest that giving is a good karma, you will get the results sometime in this life or the next. That the leader has to be able to see differently. Otherwise, you're not a leader because then you will do what everybody else does. Where do you make abnormal returns? Is when you spot an opportunity when others have not done it, or you spot it before others do it, or you deal with it in a different manner than what others do. That's how you become a leader. My father passed away when I was uh, 25, and then it was my elder brother who was uh, really the chairman of the group who passed away when he was a young age. He was only 34 years old. So, uh, and at that time, the textile mills was in a, there was a strike, uh, which had started actually in 1982. Uh, Dr. Datta Samant had the textile strike where the entire textile industry of Bombay was shut down. It was uh, 250,000 workers, it went down for about 18 months. Uh, so in 84, when I took over, and the 1984, when my brother passed away and I took over, that time we were in a difficult situation because of the strike that had taken place. And so it was also personally challenging because uh, my brother was very young. He was just 34 years old and he had passed away. So. There were several challenges at that time. What is difference then and now? I don't know. Obviously, I was not as mature. I was more shaken up at that time than I am now. I've seen a lot of these things. So once you pass through a storm, you pass through difficult times, and it, you're stronger after that. So I would say I'm now a bit stronger than what I was before that. When you acquire a business, there is a bit of heartburn. There's also a bit of... I mean, there's also a concern with the uncertainty because here is a new owner that's come into a business and a business may have been run in a particular manner. Now somebody else will run and impose their style. But uh, what uh, we try to bring very importantly is, and I give this example every time we acquire a business, is that when we acquire a business, it's like seeing when two rivers come together then they form another new river. When there's a meeting of two rivers, it's a new river which is formed, which has the qualities of both of the rivers, the good qualities. Unlike, so when large companies, and particularly when large multinationals acquire another company, it's like when a river flows into the sea. The large company is the sea. And when even if the Ganga flows into the sea, nothing changes of the sea. The Ganga has to change. The Ganga becomes salty, the Ganga and the level of the sea doesn't change. So it makes no difference. But ours is like, it's not like a river flowing into the sea, but it's like two rivers coming together. And if we can get that people to get that confidence that they, that their qualities, uh, their views will, uh, will be respected as much as 
who the acquirer is and you give them that confidence, I think that is important for a merger to succeed. So there are always challenges. So when we first acquire a business, whether it's in the UK, whether it's in the US, their culture, the way they deal with things are very different from what we do in India. Sometimes even small ways of talking and behavior, these are itself uh, challenges, I think. But uh, I think basically people, the principles of management, the foundation, the values are actually universal. And if you follow those, I found that it's successful. So whether it's an acquisition which has been made, as I said, in the US, UK, or whether it's in Chennai, it really is the same. Over a period of time, we looked at, we asked all our people after some time that what are the values that are common that you find uh, which are important in your, in the way our group works. So we took in different companies, whether it was in pharmaceuticals, whether these companies were in glass or in real estate. And we were surprised that though these people had never come together or shared, but really they all came into these values which are knowledge, action and care. So these are the values that we have across the group. And what does knowledge mean? For us, knowledge is expertise in whatever you do and innovation. So you innovate. In a world of today, you need to have innovation. Whether it's in product, whether it's in process, whether it's the way how you look at things. So and you need expertise because unless you have expertise, you cannot succeed. So that was the knowledge part. Then the second value we had was action. And in action, again, there are two sub parts. One is integrity. For us, integrity, and they felt that all of us across the group demonstrated a certain sense of integrity. And what do we mean by integrity? We mean by integrity is the how you think, what you speak, and what you do is in alignment. So you will only do what you, uh, or you will only, what you think you will speak, and what you speak you will do. When people find that alignment in your thought, speech, and action, that itself is, that is a big powerful tool, and that's what we realize we have. So that is integrity under action. And another, another sub-value under action was entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is the ability to take risks, is to act decisively. And then the last value we realized again across the group was care. Care meant, uh, one is trusteeship. We believe that we are all trustees. And who is, and we are trustees, who is a trustee? The definition of a trustee is that a trustee is one, you know, there is somebody who has given you a considerable amount, let's say, of wealth or of assets. And the job of the trustee is to see that these assets are given to the beneficiaries without the trustee taking advantage. So who are our beneficiaries? Our beneficiaries are, first of all, our customers. Our beneficiaries are our shareholders. Our beneficiary are our employees and society. So it is our, as trustees, it is our job to ensure that all these four stakeholders are taken care of. So these are the, I would say, common values that we found across the group. And I'm actually very happy to say that these values resonate with, if I was to talk to our people in the US, where we employ now almost 2,000 people, they would still relate as much the values, uh, these values, as I would talk to somebody, as I said, in India, in Chennai, or is it in Pithampur, or wherever it is. I grew up in Bombay, and uh, my family was, uh, uh, my parents, my grandmother lived with us, as well as we, are, we were three brothers at that time. So it was in that sense a simple family. My father was, uh, and both my father and mother were deeply spiritual. 
Uh, and uh, though they had uh, reasonable wealth, but they lived uh, a very simple life. So we were we were brought up as normal kids, not kids of rich families. And uh, it was an atmosphere where work was considered to be very important. So that was important. Had a simple living. So that's how it was. It was, you know. Usual, like how children are, sports and schools and... Yeah, so I'm a believer in God, I believe in Krishna. So he is my, if you call it, the Isht Devata. So I believe in all gods, but if there's a favorite and the dearest one, then it's Krishna. I don't know, you just relate, I mean, that's how you relate to it. I mean, also I've been brought up in a family which was... In a, So, as I said, in some ways, the values that I talked about of knowledge, action and care, these are really universal values. They're not only applicable at work, they're applicable in your life as well. And that's why I find that a lot of the people in our organization that work relate with it. But in addition to this, I think, um, I believe that you must have the courage to take decisions or to Travel the path less traveled. I think that is the leader you talked about. That's what I... I think uh, the other uh, value I think is important. Uh, I mean, family is important. So the support of the family and how you live together is a big... is is important. And, uh, you know, sharing, giving, these are values values of compassion, these are really important. The value of forgiveness. Whether you call it spiritual or not, but it's values that will bind. Frankly, our values are inspired by spiritual texts. So knowledge, action and care is really Gyan, Karma and Bhakti. These are the three uh, paths which have been given in our scriptures. So they are the same in the Gita, they talk about this, whether you can, which path do you follow. So in some ways that is the source of it. But many people in a society like today may not say that they are spiritual, so we say that these are eternal values.